Hi, now we're moving into interpretation of rate graphs. This is 4.3, part 2. So we look at this graph right here. Now notice on the y-axis we have rainfall. And so we model the rate of rainfall in inches per hour from midnight until 6. So it's a little bit different graph than what we've had before. And so this is what I kind of relate this with is the velocity graph, which we may have done in class already, because that is the rate on the y-axis. And then on the x-axis, we just have our time, time t. And that's represented in hours. So if we look at number 15, write a complete sentence to explain what point A on the graph represents. Include numbers and units in your answer. So this is at 3 a.m. The rate of rainfall is one unit per time. And so that would be inches per second. Or I'm sorry, inches per hour. And that would be good enough. Number 16, what is the slope of graph between A and B? The slope you can see is zero. What does that mean? The slope is zero. What does that mean for us? Well, 17 asks us to write a sentence for that. And so from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock, there is no change in the rate of rainfall. What is the slope between B and C? Well, if we look at the rise over run, we rise 1 for 1, so then the slope would be going down, so it would be negative 1. What's the meaning of that? So between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m., the rate of rainfall decreases. So we have a rate that decreases, so we are kind of looking at the second derivative, if you pick that up. And so we have one inch per hour per hour. So that's what we're doing. All right, now we get into some fun stuff. Number 20, find the definite integral from 3 to 5 of r of t dt. So the rate of rainfall, and notice the units, and I think that this is really important. This is going to be inches per hour on my r of t. Well, what is dt? That's going to be hours. And so when we multiply those out, we're just going to get inches. So this would be our amount. And so when we talk about units, the units, they don't lie. They tell you what's going to happen. So if I estimate this area under this curve, I'm looking at 3 to 5. I need to estimate, and in this case I have linear representations, I can find the exact area. So the area of this piece, uh, this first column is 1, and then if I do this little triangle over to the right, right in here, that's going to be half as much. So that's going to be 1 plus 1 half, 3 halves. What would be the units that we put on this? Well, like I said, I have inches per hour times hours, so I'm going to end up with inches. Beautiful. The units don't lie. So we've really pretty much answered this. Now we just have to write it in a complete sentence. And so then the amount, because I have the units of inches now, the amount of rainfall from 3 to 5 Oh, that trunk coming, sorry, is 1.5 inches.
That's what you have. Now for 22, we want to approximate 0 to 6 now. Well, I got this wonky little thing here. I can make a, uh, maybe this is okay approximation, but what we'll do eventually is we'll make these intervals a little bit less and less and fit that in. But right now I can just take this triangle here to do the estimate. So it's going to be 1 half, I got a 3, this is 3 here, and then my height is going to be 1. And then plus the 3 halves that I had before from 3 to 5, which is the dark red shaded region. And then if I add those two together, I'm going to get 3. So in other words, the amount of rainfall that fell from midnight to 3 is going to be the same as the amount of rainfall that fell from 3 to 5. 23, now you can go ahead and try that one yourself. So the amount of rainfall that fell between midnight and 6 a.m. is 3 inches. I had a rainstorm that was coming up here. It was going to fall right during this thing, but it didn't happen. So we can pretend that you heard lightning and hard rain behind me, but you didn't. 